Hi everyone and welcome to our presentation for week seven. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this week we're having a look at the connections between visible thinking and science learning. So it's really important that when we think about learning, we don't really know if learning is occurring. So we need to be able to ask strategic questions. We need to be able to interact with our children. We need to be able to somehow get what's going on in their brain and put it down on paper or somehow make it more concrete for us to see and also more concrete for the students to see so that they're able to um, connect with their learning and then perhaps add to it or reflect or make changes to their thinking. So making thinking visible is really important in all subjects. But again, it lends itself very well to science and a lot of the theories we've been learning with Emergent Curriculum and uh, Reggio Emilia because it's all about having student agency and voice and it is about encouraging deeper level learning. So let's have a look at some of what um, visible thinking strategies we can have a look at and why it's important. So our focus for this lecture is to talk a little bit about what is important about making thinking visible, what does it mean, what are some of the different strategies you can use, and within that we're going to look at documentation. So we already know a little bit about documentation from Reggio and from what we saw about Emergent Curriculum and the cycle of inquiry both of those focuses and many early childhood pedagogical approaches um, connect with the idea of documentation. So like I mentioned in my intro, getting that thinking out and making sure that we can, we have evidence of it. We don't know what kids are thinking. We don't know what kids are actually processing, what they're learning. And we tend to fall into the trap, particularly as primary school teachers of, I've taught it. Um, therefore children have learned it and that's not always the case just because children were present in the grade um, doesn't mean that they've actually learnt the content so how do you know how much somebody has learnt what do you know that they've taken on what misconceptions may they have formed so by documenting your thinking um, can be a great way of answering all of those type of questions So this one works you through the stages of why it's important to have visible thinking strategies or visible thinking routines in your early years centre or even in lower levels of primary school within science but also within all aspects of the curriculum and it is not something that is important to um, primary school or any um, any high school or early childhood or anywhere really. So these things are across all curriculum levels and all subjects levels because um, making your thinking visible really does help so much with that teaching and learning cycle about being able to assess what kids know, being able to establish their prior knowledge being able to ask the right questions all come down to how well you can document thinking. This little process here, and I'm not going to read it all to you, but it talks about the importance of doing things with our children in the early stages of learning. And I've seen this myself in a primary school, and I've seen people say, or teachers in the school say, Oh, that's a bit too much for, for preps. Preps can't do that. Oh, that's a bit confusing for preps. You know what? You should just start that when you get to grade three. Like, please don't make our little ones do that. And it really goes against what we were trying to achieve by developing these, um, early, um, these early thinking strategies. And the important thing is the earlier you introduce it, the better the kids get at it, the more practice they get. And then by the time they actually do get into middle and upper school, they can actually use it independently and they're able to use the routines seamlessly and use the routines in a way that's quite genuine and 
teachers are able to then take a step back and they don't need to explicitly scaffold the use of these tools. So, for example, if we have a look at the initial phase, well, this is when we're first teaching students or first teaching our children in our early years centre to start using these routines. Now, if you've never come across them before, and if you're quite little like the little guys that we are talking about, you will have no exposure to this. So we need to use a routine um, phase. It has to be formal and quite deliberate and often planned. The students are not just going to say, I really think I need to use something to document my thinking here. So they need to be scaffolded by you. You will need to think what would really help them document their thinking here? And this is quite important to our assessment three because as you're planning your sequence of learning, you can stop and have a, a reflect on how am I going to get their, their thinking out on paper? How am I going to have evidence of this thinking so that I'm able to take this evidence and then reflect on it and say, are there any misconceptions? What do the kids want to know? Where am I going to next? is all linked to making thinking visible. So sometimes it can feel quite clunky and quite planned and a little bit forced in the early times of, of using these strategies because kids aren't used to them. But then as they move through to the developing stage and then into the ad advanced stage, we go from the idea that once they become more, these routines become phased in and they become more routine, Kids will begin to be able to use them more effectively um, and they'll be able, they'll be used to discussing. They'll be used to you asking these kind of probing questions and it becomes second nature to them. So if you ask them a question and then you always come back with, well, why do you think that? Or how do you know that? And you ask probing questions, the kids will just be naturally able to respond to those questions. You can see over here in the advanced phase that it becomes quite seamless and integrated. Now, obviously, with little three and four year olds um, between that three and five age group, we are not going to become developing, perhaps, but definitely not advanced. So I'm not saying that this is something that we would aim for with the age group that we are looking at. We would just be introducing them mainly to these um, routines. But if we do, if we do introduce them, by the time they get to primary school and then perhaps later primary school, they will be advanced. They will be able to use them seamlessly. They will be able to, um, it says here, a routine in this phase is conducted with a natural fluidity from one part to the next, not conducted in a step-by-step -step approach like the initial phase. It's seamlessly integrated, combined and adapted, and students begin to apply the routine to learning experiences without being formally used by the teacher to help them unpack and gain a deeper understanding. So I have seen older children, older primary school children become quite advanced in these using these type of um, skills and using their own agency and their own thoughts to navigate this process themselves. So they will say to themselves, how am I going to document this? Is there a graphic organizer I can use for this? Yes, I've used this one before. I'm going to use this. And it's quite amazing to see them use that. So we are all the way back here with our little guys in the age group that we are looking at, but it is important to start it, start using it, start using it now so that they do become advanced later. And it's such an amazing tool to be able to use because you use it for the rest of your life. All right, so important elements. Now I found an absolutely amazing website which I'm gonna actually use to be sort of the guidance behind this lecture today. So this has come from there and I'll talk to you about the website in a moment, but um, some of the important elements of making your thinking visible in terms of teaching is really the questioning, the listening and the documenting, as we said. Teacher questioning is probably the most important because it's going to be you as the teacher who is drawing information from the, from the, from the children in front of you. 
So in your sequence of learning for, um, for assessment three, if you haven't thought about it already, you might want to reflect on the type of questions you're asking and really plan what type of questions you want to ask or have question starters in front of you, which we'll have a look at in a sec. We need to be listening and we need to make sure that the kids are listening. As I said before, some teachers will be probably more primary school based um, example, but some student um, teachers will be at the front of the classroom. Children will be sitting listening. They've talked for 25 minutes about a particular topic and and they're teaching it and the kids are listening. But are they listening? That's the thing. Are they, are they listening or are they daydream, <laughs> daydreaming about their, their snack or, or which kids are going to play with at lunchtime or are they thinking about their new puppy at home? So just because kids are, are there doesn't mean that they're actually actively engaging and actively learning. The only way to know if they're actually learning is to document their thinking and have it out for us to see. And then we get to the documenting. So let's have a look at this particular website. Um, so it says Socratic questioning, and I just thought I'd share them with you because it's got some really great, oh, that did come up. Yep, good. <laughs> Didn't know if my link was gonna work. It comes up with some really great questions, sort of scaffolds and prompts that you can use. So it talks about the fact that uh, if you haven't had a look at I mean, it's not part of our course, but if you just have time and you're interested and you would like to learn more about it, um, Kath Murdoch, um, which I've done some work with at our primary school that um, I was working at, um, has done a lot of work with inquiry um, and her book is called The Power of Inquiry. And these type of questions have come from Kath's book um, to do with inquiry. So she calls her question Socratic questioning um, as in a way, as a way to get really deep thinking and to really push and to really inquire, get kids to inquire into their own learning, but also for teachers to, and educators to be able to see what children know. Um, so she's got some in, examples of question stems um, to clarify, probe assumptions, justify and seek evidence, elicit other perspectives and viewpoints, always important explore and reveal implications and consequences and to think about question itself. So the questions to clarify, I really love the way she's broken this down. So if you need to, if you're just stuck on, like you seem to keep asking, like, why do you think that or the certain, what are you saying? Or if you, if you, um, I know I do it too. We all sort of get stuck in asking the same kinds of questions, perhaps over and over, or we just ask the same kind, like we just get exhausted with the same kind of questioning all the time. So this can be a great way to maybe expand into some of the other areas rather than always asking clarifying questions. Um, so can you restate that in another way? How does that connect with su um, such and such? To probe for assumptions, you could ask questions like, uh, what makes you say that? Might there be another way of looking at it? Elaborate on your thinking. You've got questions to justify or seek evidence. How do you know that? You've got some about viewpoints. I won't read them all to you, but I'll give you this link in our, um, in our LSM. So really, really great question. So if you're stuck in your learning sequence and you feel like you're asking the same kind of questions over and over again, this could be a great um, tool just to help you some, think of some new ones because I, I do as well. I often get stuck on what kinds of questions to ask. Okay, so just pop that down for a moment. Okay, so here are our visible thinking routines. And what does it mean exactly um, about a routine? What does it mean routine? What does this word mean? So thinking visible, think, visible thinking routines are actual tools, things that you can use in a classroom, things that you could use in an early year setting. Now, yes, some of these probably are not very well suited to the early years of learning. You'd have to choose very carefully to see which ones are suited um, to the early years and, and make the most sense in the early years. 
with our particular website, which was the website that we were just having a look at. I've given you the links here too. I'll just um, shift back to that. Here we go. So here's a website that um, I was mentioning and it's called Thinking Pathways. And it is an absolutely amazing website because it takes you through um, thinking routines, the cultures of thinking, inquiry-based learning. Um, I even thought I'd show you the fact that it has a un I mean, obviously these are more primary school based, but you could change um, ideas. But if you go to um, units of work, there is science and technology. And you can see here that there are um, some units of work if you would like to get some ideas perhaps that you could use in your A3. Um, just because they're um, early years of primary units doesn't mean that you can't get some of the ideas from there. It doesn't mean that you have to use them um, exactly as they are. But if you're a little bit stuck about something to do with space and earth and space or physical world, living world, digital technologies, so there are examples of units of work in there. Let's get back to thinking routines. Um, go on to always. Oh, yeah. So under thinking routines, if you go to thinking routines, it tells you routines for exploring, um, introducing and exploring ideas, routines for synthesizing and organizing ideas. Routines for digging deeper into ideas, routines for giving feedback, routines for self-reflection, and routines for engaging with others. So all of these give you a concrete task that you can ask children to do. It might be a graphic organizer, might be a worksheet, might be a mind map, might be a brainstorm, might be a picture, might be a discussion. All of these things are going to help you to document thinking. Like I said, some of them can be a little bit complex. This is just a website about thinking routines. It's not linked to any particular age level, but you as the educator would look at them and think that's a bit beyond my students. Perhaps I could do it in an adaptive way by changing some of the ideas, but still having it as a thinking tool. Could I change some of the headings? Um, so obviously use your discretion there. But when you um, click on one of them, let's have a look at See, Think, Wonder. Then it brings you to, which I absolutely loved and I definitely wanted to share with you guys, the fact that it's got a downloadable file. So you've got the template here of the documenting and your See, Think, Wonder um, sort of card that you could use to show students. And you have your your prompt so this is a thinking routine prompt to help kids to reflect and to think about ideas so you've got see what do you see and that's purely what do you see what observations can you make this would be really beautiful in a science unit if you had students were making a tall tower they were trying to make the tallest tower before the blocks were um going to fall over and then you could just stop and you could ask them to see think and wonder what do they see and that is purely what you see not what you think what not you saw what you didn't see outside what some other kid did it's purely what do you see in front of you and it's a great tool for really getting kids to actually look at what they see and not trying to add or think about other things um, what what do you think is going on and what does it make you wonder? So these are some prompts to help kids. These are your question prompts. You can have this in front of you to help you to ask the right questions and to prompt their thinking. Now, what I love about this website is that they must know about the importance of documentation because every single thinking routine has documenting thinking because we need to be able to document our thinking. Just having a discussion um, sometimes can be okay, but how are we gonna have evidence of that discussion? Do we record it? Do we jot down notes? So each one of them has something that you can use as a documenting tool. You might not decide to use that particular documenting tool. You don't have to. Again, as the educator, you'll make that decision. Um, 
But then you can think about how you could use this documentation tool with the kids, with the children. What do you see? Will you get them to draw it? Will an adult write it down for all of their ideas, perhaps in different colours? So it's a really, really great website to see what kind of thinking tools there are and they always give you a documentation. Let's have a look at another one. Let's go to, uh, what's a good one that I really like? Um, oh, let's go to traffic light reflection. I've never seen that one before. So we've got traffic light reflection. So this is something that would happen at the end of some sort of um, of some sort of um, learning sequence. So we've got, um, I felt confident that I understand this concept well. I'm ready for the next learning challenge. I'm getting there, but I would like some more practice. So that's a bit of an assessment one. Let me go back to, I'm trying to look for CSI. Oh, I'm not sure if it's got it on here. Oh, here we go. Color symbol image. Um, again, you'll need to see if these ones would suit the particular children that you're working with and you can make that decision. So your sides are all beautiful one. I've used that a lot in primary school classrooms. Um, color symbol image. Um, you choose a color that best represents the idea and you get the children to talk about why that color represents the idea. So if you were having a look at the scientific concepts of, say, floating, um, you might have kids playing with water and they might be looking at when you get into um, the bath or into the tub, the water level rises and they can think about a color that best represents this idea, whether they go for blue of the water or even yellow just because they were excited about um, what new ideas they'd come up with. Um, you create a symbol and you have a look at an image. And again, it's got your, um, your documenting here and it's asked you what color best represents your idea and why did you choose that color? Um, a lot of them include, um, there was one that included visual. I'm not sure if I can remember what it's called for you guys. There was one that included um, having a look at a picture and um, really thinking about what you saw in the picture um, as your, I think it was for your inspiration of, of see, think, wonder, the one that we had a look at before. A lot of the times um, you can use things like images. So um, and perhaps if you were having a look at volcanoes for your assessment three, you could have a picture of a volcano on the whiteboard or on a poster and you could ask the kids to see, think, wonder about it. Perhaps it's a good way of, of assessing some prior knowledge at the beginning of your unit. So incorporating some thinking routines into your unit will help you to make sure that you're documenting. It will help you to make sure that you're asking really good probing questions and it will help you to see what the kids know and where you're gonna take it with their next um, step of learning. Let me just go back to my slides and make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, just getting back to that website real quick. Um, so if you just go to home, um, so it's got your thinking routines. It's also got cultures of thinking if you need to understand a little bit more about um, what the importance of thinking visually is. There's a couple of nice articles. I mean, this is not part of our, our prescribed reading. It's more just if you would like to know more about thinking routines and, and questioning um, because that will just help you with um, – making sure that your A3 is well put together. So are you asking questions to probe children to think more deeply? So we really want to move from real surface learning to really probing down into what kids know and keep on questioning. I really like that thinking tool. I think it's called five Y's or five W's, but you just keep asking the children why. So if you say, why did the water level rise um, and the kid Oh, sorry, and the child says, oh, because I popped the boat in there. 
Well, why does the water level rise when you put the boat in there? Oh, because the boat is heavier and it's making the water go up. Well, why is the water going up when it's heavier? So you just keep probing um, to really get the kids to think about why it is that that's happening. How do you make sure that um, kids or children are engaged and actively listening? So we really want to make sure if we are particularly those who are doing it with their real group of children, how do we get inside their little heads? So they're just sitting there in front of us absorbing the information, but how much did they actually absorb? How much are they actually taking in? We could be quite surprised. And how are you getting that thinking down on paper? It doesn't always need to be writing. A lot of those um, thinking routines that I showed you in the website sort of give you a page to do. You don't have to always think um, sort of within the box that you have to document it in some sort of worksheet. It could be a drawing. It could be them showing you and then you take a photo of it. So you can be quite creative in how you want to get it down on paper. Um, the kids perhaps could guide you in how they think it could look as in the terms of documenting. I'm sure you guys will have some absolutely brilliant ideas around that. So using thinking routines is important to all subject areas, not just science. But you can see how really getting that thinking down on paper is really going to help us know what types of scientific concepts um, the children know and you can build on as their educator. Um, thinking about scientific concepts is not something that comes naturally to me. I would need to really look at what the kids are telling me and really have a chance to reflect on that and perhaps like we've mentioned in past lectures about having chats with other people because they might come up with other things that perhaps you hadn't considered. Thanks so much for listening and I hope you have an absolutely amazing Christmas and New Year um, and we'll see you um, sometime in that first week back, probably the Thursday. We can go back to our Thursday um, sessions, um, live sessions, um, now that we've got uh, the busy Christmas time over with. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's for those who celebrate, and I'll see you in the New Year.